How's it going eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to properly set the idle on a two stroke lawn boy. So let's get right into it. So today we'll be working on not just any two stroke lawn boy. This one's actually a commercial lawn boy. It is a 21 inch and the model number is a CC21 CPN. And you guys can see that I've already gone ahead and redone the fuel line and whatnot. I'll get into that shortly. But the focus of today's video was going to be how to properly set the idle on one of these Lawn Boy two-stroke lawnmowers here. Coming up here to the control lever, we have our on and off switch right here, and we have the throttle control. So back here with the turtle, that's the slow speed, and then you're going to come up here to the rabbit, that is the fast speed, and then to start it, and engage the choke lever is going to be right there all the way forward. So you would fire it up and then you'd bring it back to the fast speed. However, when this control lever was in the fast speed, the engine had an idle that was similar to the low speed setting. And no matter where I put this control lever, the engine's RPM would not change. Now to make things a little easier, I am going to be removing this top cover. There's going to be four Phillips screws that we're going to be removing. And on this particular model, there is a little bracket that holds the throttle cable and that mounts to the side of the top cover. And as you can see, I've already gone ahead and removed that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the top cover now just so that we can get a little better access and a little bit more room around the carburetor. And with those four screws removed, we can go ahead and lift off the top cover here and we'll just set that off to the side for now. And that's going to expose what is an air vein throttle control. So basically the flywheel spins and the fins on this flywheel here create an air force and that air force pushes this lever here and the butterfly valve is connected to that. When your throttle control lever is in the lowest position, so the rabbit, that's gonna be the slowest engine RPM, there is the least amount of resistance on this little air vein here. So what's gonna happen is as the flywheel is spinning, and in order to determine which way your flywheel spins, you can always come back to your recoil and just see which side the rope is on. So the rope is on the right side and we're going to be pulling from the right, which means the flywheel is going to be rotating in a clockwise direction, which means that the engine is going to rotate in a clockwise direction. So the air is going to be pushing this way and is going to be pushing the throttle air vein this way, which is going to close the butterfly valve on the carburetor. So again, least amount of resistance in the slow RPM. Then when you come up to your throttle control and you put it into the rabbit or the fast high RPM mode, your air vein will now have the maximum amount of tension on it. So if this is where the throttle butterfly valve is closed, that's going to be the lowest RPM. And then that is where the butterfly valve is fully open. So that's going to be the highest RPM. So when you set the tension of the spring to a specific tension, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, basically the force of air is going to be fighting against the tension of the spring, and it's going to keep that air vein somewhere in the middle. So how do you properly set the RPM on one of these engines? Well, it's super simple. The first thing I'm gonna do is come up to the throttle control area here, and we're going to put it all the way forward into the choke position. Now with the lever all the way forward, it is going to pull this cable all the way back. And this arm has your spring hooked up to it, which is wrapped around the little air vein there. Now, while that happens, it is also pulling back this arm here, which engages your choke lever. So this is your choke lever right there. Now, one thing that I do want to mention before we go ahead and make any adjustments is that you're gonna wanna come over to your air filter casing here, and we're just gonna pop off this clip. We can go ahead and open up our air filter cover, and we will remove our air filter. Now, having your throttle cable adjusted improperly is definitely going to negatively affect how your engine runs. And the throttle cable is right here and it bolts to the back of the air filter box right there. Now you can use a 5 16th driver to go ahead and loosen that off. And basically this hole here is slotted and it will allow you to move your throttle cable backing plate either forwards or backwards. Now, when your throttle lever is pushed all the way forward, you should see the butterfly valve on the choke completely closed. If 
It is open slightly. It means that it's not pulling back far enough, which means all you have to do is loosen off your 5 16 bolt and pull this little throttle cable bracket backwards and it will put more tension onto your choke and it will close your choke farther. And I'll try to get a good shot here, but this is going to be our high RPM right there. This is going to be our low RPM. And then to start it, this is going to be the full choke position. So you can see that my throttle cable is adjusted properly. So once you have your lever all the way forward, what we're going to do is pull it back until we see the choke lever fully disengage. So right about there. So at this position here is going to be the highest RPM setting without engaging the choke. But moving on to how to set the idle, that spring you guys are going to be able to see wraps around the base of that black plastic cogged gear there. And the way we're going to adjust that is quite simple. What you're gonna do is rotate your air vane all the way forward. Then coming down to the plastic cogged gear there, you're going to rotate it clockwise until you hear it click. So you can see that I've rotated my air vane all the way forwards. And for the purpose of this video, I just have a standard slotted screwdriver up against one of the grooves on that gear. And like I said, we're going to be rotating it clockwise. And that's all that you're going to hear. So don't worry about breaking it because it is supposed to click. So a lot of guys think that, you know, they're pushing too hard and, you know, it sounds like it broke. It's actually designed to do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to be rotating it again in a clockwise direction until you get your desired RPM. Now, if you've just cleaned and rebuilt your carburetor like I have, you fire your machine up and you put the throttle to the high RPM setting, but for whatever reason, your engine is running at a low RPM. In the case of this engine, the engine was running at 2,400 RPM. And if you're wondering how I determined what my engine's RPM was, well, I use a single cylinder wireless tachometer. Basically, the way that this works is it measures the spark coming out of the coil. So you put this little spring up to the high tension lead, also known as the spark plug wire, and you're just going to press over with the engine running and then this gauge is going to go up. So again, we were only getting about 2,400 RPM at the high RPM setting. And this engine is supposed to run at anywhere between 3,000 and 3,200 RPM as per the manufacturer's specifications. So if your engine is running at a very low RPM, even though you have the lever set to the high RPM zone, I would recommend that you start out with about four clicks once you've already done four clicks, I would recommend going down to about two clicks per adjustment. You can go ahead and start it up again, take another measurement or listen to see what the change was. And then once you start getting close to your desired RPM, I would highly recommend going down to one click because what's gonna happen is I've been told that once you click it too far going clockwise, the spring inside can actually reset to the weakest position and then you're going to have to keep rotating it clockwise to tighten that spring up again and put more tension on it. And depending on the model of your lawn boy, you may not have to remove the top cover at all because I can actually fit my hand inside of here with a finger and could easily make this adjustment without having the top cover removed. However, for the purpose of this video, I wanted to show you all the workings of all of the little pieces here. So I went ahead and removed the cover because without your cover on, obviously you won't be able to use your recoil, but it may also affect the force of air pushing against your little air vane here. So once you have your cover back on, you can go outside, fire up your engine, and then measure the RPM. Or if you don't have a wireless tachometer, just listen for it by ear and you'll have to make your own adjustments. So I've already gone ahead and made my adjustment now so I can take this thing outside, fire it up, let you guys hear how it sounds. And I will also use my wireless tachometer to show you what the RPM is set at. Now, like I said, I've already gone ahead and done a carb clean, full rebuild on it. So it's got all new parts, needle valve, needle valve seat, float bowl gasket, and bowl bolt washer on the bottom. My customer already had a new clean air filter in it. I went ahead and installed a new fuel line because the one my customer had was a little bit too thick and was leaking a bit. I also went ahead and installed a nice clear 
paper fuel filter here because now you're going to be able to see the dirt and debris that's going into that filter and my customer can go ahead and use the fuel shutoff valve here to shut off the fuel and then change a fuel filter whenever he needs to. And this fuel filter is a much better design than the one that they had from the factory, which was this little metal screen here. And believe it or not, they actually put the screen inside of the fuel inlet in the carburetor there. And then to further upgrade my customer's fuel system here, uh, basically the fuel valve that it had is not that great of a design. There's little O-rings inside of the bottom of these. They get worn out. And what I noticed was when I removed the original fuel line, and I closed the fuel valve to shut off the flow of fuel, uh, this was dripping a little bit, which is no good. And instead of rebuilding this and you know getting a new O-ring inside of there, I went ahead and installed the inline fuel shutoff valve here. And then just to finish everything off, I went ahead and installed a little 90 degree fitting here in place of where the original fuel shutoff valve was. And I just use a little bit of seal all on the threads there because it is metal threading into a plastic tank and I wanted to prevent any leaking from happening. Now you just go ahead, turn on the fuel line. It fills up the fuel filter. Everything's nice and clean and simple. And this is the way that I would do it on my own machine. And one thing that I would like to point out is I'm running 50 to one premix in here. So these old lawn boys back in the day, they ran 32 to one. But uh, like I've said numerous times before, and I'll reiterate it again, the oil today lubricates much better than the oil back when this was brand new. So we run 50 to one in all of our two stroke machines and I've never had an issue. And I just wanted to add that once you get your idle set and your engine is warmed up to operating temperature, you can then go ahead and adjust your air fuel mixture screw, which on this Lawn Boy engine with the wall broke carburetor, it's right at the front of the engine. Basically the easiest way to set your air fuel mixture screw is normally you're going to thread it all the way in until it's snug and then thread it out about three quarter of a turn. And then what you're gonna do is thread it in clockwise until the engine starts running rough and then go ahead and thread it out counterclockwise until the engine starts running rough and then find the spot right in the middle of those two adjustments where the engine runs nice and smooth. I also installed a new RJ12C spark plug gapped at 30 thousandths of an inch. So with the fuel valve now on and I did take a paint marker to mark my high RPM setting. So I'll go ahead and put the throttle cable on choke, make sure it's set to the on position and give it a pull. Like I said, using my single cylinder wireless tachometer there, it's super simple to determine what RPM the engine is set to. And like I said, the manufacturer specifies that this engine should be set anywhere from 3000 to about 3200 RPM on the high speed setting. So we've set it to about 31 and a half, which is right around the middle point of that. The engine starts up first pull, it runs strong. My customer takes good care of this thing. Everything is well maintained. So this commercial lawn boy is fully tuned up and it's ready to go back to my customer. And just speaking of my customer, my shop is located in Port Coburn, Ontario. And my customer here actually drove down from Port Perry, Ontario, which believe it or not is two and a half hours away. So he drove two and a half hours down because he said that, you know, he was watching my YouTube videos. He said he learned a lot from my videos and he just wanted to kind of thank me for uh, putting up some free information. And he said the videos have helped him out. So he made the trek two and a half hour drive all the way down here because he said that I was the only person he wanted to work on his machine. So a big shout out goes to my customer for making the long haul down here to Port Coburn. And I'm sure he'll be very pleased with how his lawn boy runs now. Well, that's it for today's video. We were able to get this commercial Lawn Boy fully serviced and tuned up. It starts first pull, it runs great, and the RPMs are set to the manufacturer's specifications. And I just wanna point out that when I was initially making that RPM adjustment, 
I had Googled to see if anyone made a video on how to do that adjustment. And I saw that there was actually no videos on YouTube of how to make that super easy adjustment to increase the RPM on your two stroke long bike carburetor. So I figured I'd make this quick video and hopefully it helps some of you guys out. But if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.